Cameron Giles, born February 4, 1976, better known by his stage name Cameron, is an American rapper. Beginning his career in the early 1990s as Killa Cam, Giles signed with Lance and Rivera's Entertainment, an imprint of Epic Records to release his first two studio albums Confessions of Fire, 1998, and SDE, Sports Drugs and Entertainment, 2000, the former received gold certification by the RIAA. After leaving Epic, Giles signed with Rockefeller Records in 2001 to release his third studio album, Come Home With Me, the following year. It received platinum certification by the RIAA and spawned the singles Oh Boy, featuring Joel Santana, and Hey Ma, featuring Joel Santana, Freaky Ziki, and Toya, which peaked at numbers 4 and 3 on the Billboard Hot 100, respectively. His fourth studio album, Purple Haze, 2004, was met with similar success and likewise received gold certification by the RIAA. Due to personal disagreements with Jay-Z, Giles, and his label parted ways with Rockefeller in 2005 in favor of Asylum Records. In 2006, Giles released his fifth studio album Kill a Season, accompanied by a film of the same name in which Giles starred and made his director-screenwriter debut. In 2009, after taking a hiatus due to his mother's health, Giles returned to music and released his sixth studio album Crime Pays, 2009, which peaked at number three on the Billboard 200. A decade later, he released his seventh album, Purple Haze 2, 2019, which narrowly entered the chart. Aside from his solo career, Giles formed the short-lived hip-hop group Children of the Corn alongside Big Al and Maze in 1993, they disbanded in 1997. He subsequently formed the hip-hop collective The Diplomats, also known as Dipset, in the latter year, alongside his longtime affiliate Jim Jones and cousin Freaky Ziki. He later performed as one half of the duo UN, Us Now, with fellow Harlem native Vado, the duo released two collaborative projects. In addition to the Kill a Season film, Giles has acted in other works including the Rockefeller films Paper Soldiers and Paid in Full in 2002. Biography 1976-1997, Early Life and Career Beginnings Giles was born and raised in the East Harlem neighborhood of Upper Manhattan, New York City. He was raised by his mother, Frederica Giles, July 10, 1955 to February 9, 2023. He went to school at the Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics, where he met his longtime friends Mays and Jim Jones. He was a promising basketball player alongside Mays, however, he was unable to take advantage of scholarship offers due to his poor academic standing. Instead, he enrolled in a college in Texas, without even graduating from high school, but was expelled and returned to Harlem where he began selling drugs before starting his rap career. Giles was eventually introduced to the notorious B.I.G. through his childhood friend Mays. B.I.G. introduced Giles to Lance Rivera, who signed him to his label, Entertainment. He began his musical career in the mid-1990s, rapping alongside Big Al, Mays, and his cousin Bloodshed, in a group called Children of the Corn. After Bloodshed's death in a car accident on March 2, 1997, the group disbanded and the remaining members pursued solo careers. 1998-2002, Confessions of Fire, SDE, and Come Home With Me two years before Big L's murder in 1999, Cameron was introduced to the notorious B.I.G. by Mays, who was signed to Bad Boy Records at the time. Biggie was so impressed by Cameron that he introduced him to his partner Lance and Rivera, who signed Cameron to his entertainment label, distributed by Epic Records. His debut album, Confessions of Fire, was released a year later in July 1998 and included singles such as 357, which was also featured in the movie Woo, and Horse and Carriage featuring Mays, which reached the R&B Top 10. The album achieved gold status and made the top 10 of both the pop and R&B charts. In 2000, Cameron was working with music executive Tommy Motola and released his second album SDE, Sports Drugs and Entertainment, on Sony Slash Epic Records. With features from Destiny's Child, Joel Santana, Jim Jones, NORE, and producer Digga, it included the relatively successful singles, Let Me Know and What Means the World to You. The album reached number 2 on the R&B slash hip-hop albums chart, and number 14 on the Billboard 200. After demanding a release from Sony slash Epic Records, 
Cameron signed with his childhood friend and new manager Damon Dash to Rockefeller Records in December 2001, alongside artists such as Jay-Z, Beanie Siegel, Freeway, and Memphis Bleak. A reported $4.5 million record deal was agreed upon with Damon Dash and his Rockefeller partners Kareem Biggs and Jay-Z in the form of a record advance. His third and most successful album Come Home With Me was released in 2002 featuring guests such as Jay-Z, Beanie Siegel, and Memphis Bleak, and production from Just Blaze, Kanye West, and The Heatmakers. It included the hit singles Oh Boy and Hey Ma, which both featured The Diplomat's newest member, Joel Santana. The album achieved platinum status and served as a stepping stone for Cameron's group The Diplomats to sign with Rockefeller. In 2002, Cameron went on to appear in the Damon Dash-produced film, Paid in Full, in which he played one of three main characters alongside Mackay Pfeiffer and Wood Harris. In 2006, he started shooting his movie for his album titled Kill a Season. The film would mark both Cameron's screenwriting and directorial debuts, as well as his return to acting. Kill a Season was released to DVD on April 25, 2006, after a special two-day theatrical release. 2003-2009, Purple Haze, Kill a Season, and Crime Pays in March 2003, Cameron teamed up with his fellow Diplomats members Jim Jones, Joel Santana, and Freaky Ziki to release the Diplomats' debut double-disc album, Diplomatic Immunity, under Rockefeller-slash-Diplomat Records, which was quickly certified gold by the RIAA. The album featured the lead single Dipset Anthem, a remix to Cameron's hit Hey Ma, and the Street Anthem, single I Really Mean It, as well as featuring production from Kanye West, Just Blaze, and The Heatmakers. A year later, The Diplomats released their second album, Diplomatic Immunity 2. On December 7, 2004, Cameron's fourth studio album, Purple Haze, was released on Def Jam slash Rockefeller Records. It featured collaborations with Kanye West, Jaheem, Twista, Joel Santana, and various other artists, and ultimately reached gold status. The album was also a critical success, being ranked 114th on Pitchfork Media's Top 200 Albums of the First Decade of the 21st Century list, and 10th on Rhapsody's Hip Hop's Best Albums of the Decade list. However, after feeling that the album was poorly promoted and that his projects were not receiving enough attention, Cameron requested his release from Rockefeller Records. On April 28, 2005, Cameron officially joined the Warner Music Group under the Asylum Records imprint. He began work on what would be his first project for the new label. Cameron's fifth studio album, titled Kill a Season, was released on May 16, 2006, featuring production from long-term collaborators The Heatmakers, Charles Main, and Ty Fife, as well as others such as Alchemist and INFO. Along with the album, Cameron released his first film, in which he wrote, directed, and starred in, also titled Kill a Season. Despite selling 112,000 units in the first week and debuting at number two on the charts, Kill a Season failed to have the same sales strength as his two previous releases, but Kill a Season became certified gold. After the release of Kill a Season and his feud with 50 Cent in 2007, Cameron took a three-year hiatus from music after his mother suffered three strokes which left her paralyzed on her left side. He moved to Florida with her to set up her rehabilitation and therapy, and stayed there until she had fully recovered. Cameron's 2009 album, Crime Pays was released on Asylum slash Diplomat Records, featuring the majority of the production handled by Schizo and Arab Music. Although none of the singles from the album managed to chart, the album still reached number three on the Billboard 200 but only sold 150,000 units, making it the lowest-selling album of his career. In 2009 Cameron formed a new label, Dipset West and new group The UN 2010, Present, Mixtapes, EPs, and Collaborations in late 2009, early 2010, Cameron released a series of mixtapes hosted by DJ Drama called Boss of All Bozas, which featured his new upcoming artist Vado. Cameron also released a collaboration album with his new group The UN, which included himself and fellow Harlem rapper Vado titled Heat in Here Volume 1. The first single off the album was Speaking Tongues, which peaked at number 82 on the US R&B charts. Cameron announced that he would be releasing a joint album with rapper Vado called Guns and Butter. On April 19, 2011, the album was released on E1 Music. 
In 2013, Vado signed with We The Best Music Group, after his personal friendship with Cameron eroded, although Vado maintained at the time that they still worked on a business level and had no animosity towards him. After three years Cameron and Jim Jones decided to mend their differences and start working together again for the third installment of the Diplomatic Immunity album along with fellow Diplomat members Joel Santana and Freaky Ziki. Cameron announced that the Diplomat album's release would take place around Christmas 2010. The first promotional single featuring the reunited Diplomat members was titled Salute. It was produced by Arab Music and would later appear on Jim Jones' album Capo. In 2012, Cameron was featured on rapper slash singer was Khalifa's second studio album ONIFC on a song titled The Bluff. Also in 2012, Cameron would be featured on rapper slash singer Nicki Minaj's second studio album Pink Friday. Roman reloaded on a song titled I Am Your Leader along with rapper Rick Ross. In 2013 during an interview Cameron discussed his seventh upcoming studio album Killa Season 2 stating that it will feature guest appearances from Dipset. T.I., Nicki Minaj, and Wiz Khalifa. On October 1, 2013, Cameron released his promotional mixtape for the album titled Ghetto Heaven Vol. 1. In January 2014, according to Complex Magazine, Cameron and A-Track were to team up for a collaborative EP to be titled Federal Reserve, which would be executive produced by Dame Dash and have featured appearances by Joel Santana and Jim Jones. In May, they put out the first single from the album, titled Dipsh Asterisk TS, featuring commentary from Dame Dash and Joel Santana on the hook and an accompanying official video. On February 11, 2014, Cameron along with fashion designer Mark McNary revealed their cape line during New York Fashion Week. On October 20, 2014, via his Instagram Cameron revealed and released his Ebola mask stating on the caption Ebola is no joking matter so if you have to be safe, be fashionable. Cameron also has a fashion clothing line titled Dips at USA which is branded off his former label Diplomat Records. On July 1, 2014, Cameron released his first of the month, Volume 1 EP. On August 1, 2014, Cameron released his first of the month, Volume 2 EP. It included the single So Bad featuring Nicki Minaj. On September 1, 2014, Cameron released his first of the month, Volume 3 EP. On October 1, 2014, Cameron released his first of the month, Volume 4 EP. On November 1, 2014, Cameron released his first of the month, Volume 5 EP. On December 1, 2014, Cameron released his first of the month, Volume 6 EP. On December 11, 2014, Cameron announced that his next studio album will not be a sequel to his fifth album Kill a Season but will be a sequel to his critically acclaimed fourth studio album Purple Haze titled Purple Haze 2. Cameron also announced that this would be his final album. On December 16, 2014, Cameron would release his compilation First of the Month, box set, Deluxe Edition. On January 1, 2015, well-known DJ Funkmaster Flex announced via his Instagram that he had spoken to fellow. Diplomat members Cameron, Jim Jones, and Joel Santana about an upcoming Diplomats mixtape, which included fellow member Freaky Ziki. He also confirmed and stated that he will be hosting the mixtape along with DJs slash rappers producers DJ Khaled, Swizz Beats, and DJ Mustard. In July 2016, he announced that he will release an album called Kill a Pink and he promoted his line of signature the Reebok Flea Twos, and announced that the shoe will be released in combination with the album. Other ventures directing and acting in 2002, Cameron went on to appear in the Damon Dash-produced film, Paid in Full, in which he played one of three main characters alongside Mackay Pfeiffer and Wood Harris, in 2006, started shooting his movie for his album titled Kill a Season, the film would mark both Cameron's screenwriting and directorial debuts, as well as his return to acting. Kill a Season was released to DVD on April 25, 2006, after a special two-day theatrical release, fashion designing on February 11, 2014, Cameron, along with fashion designer Mark McNary, revealed their cape line during the New York Fashion Week. On October 20, 2014, via his Instagram, Cameron revealed and released his Ebola mask, stating on the caption, Ebola is no joking matter, so if you have to be safe, be fashionable. Duh. Cameron also has a fashion clothing line titled Dipset USA.
which is branded off his former label Diplomat Records, sports commentary in 2023, Cameron launched an independently produced sports news talk show, called It Is What It Is. Cameron's co-host on the show is rapper, Mays. The show's first episode premiered on February 27, 2023, on YouTube. In the months preceding the show's launch, it has achieved viral success on the internet. According to Cameron, he has already turned down several multi-million dollar offers from buyers looking to purchase the show. In August 2023, it was officially announced that the show has partnered with Underdog Fantasy Sports, Controversies Jay-Z Although there had been rumors of a feud between the two MCs, Cameron went public first with a track on Kill a Season called You Gotta Love It, Jay-Z Diss, featuring ex-Dipset member Max B. In the song, Cameron takes jabs at Jay-Z Sage, his alleged biting, stealing, of lyrics, and his current girlfriend. He references Jay-Z using the notorious B.I.G.'s rhymes, rapping You ain't the only one with big wallets got at my shit's brolic, but your publishing should go to Miss Wallace. He then released another song, Swagger Jacker, Biter Not a Writer, to highlight the many songs Jay-Z has borrowed lines from. In the next issue of XXL, Cameron explained the beef originated when Jay-Z became CEO and president of Rockefeller Records, 36, in 2010, Cameron stated he does not have any issues with Jay-Z anymore. In 2013, on Pound Cake, a song by Drake, Jay-Z mentioned Cameron again by rapping, in the middle of a verse, now here's the icing on the cake, slash cake, cake cake, cake cake, uh, slash I'm just getting started, oh, yeah, we got a bitch, slash I've done made more millionaires than the lotto did, slash dame made millions, big made millions, slash she made millions, just made millions, slash liar made millions, Cam made millions, slash beans would tell you if he wasn't in his feelin', gee, s Cam replied briefly on, come and talk to me. Off of Ghetto Heaven Volume 1. She said Jay made you a millionaire? And looked me in the eyes slash said cake, 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 got that from the pies slash we made each other millions, that was my reply slash had a mill before I met him, baby, that ain't no lie slash see he named some Harlem cats and the homie from the chi slash but my thing, he ain't named nobody from the stewie, on April 26, 2019, he and Jay-Z ended their feud at the reopened Webster Hall. 50 Cent on February 1, 2007, Cameron and 50 Cent had a live argument on the Angie Martinez show on Hot 97 Radio. 50 Cent commented that he felt Coke Entertainment was a graveyard, meaning major record labels would not work with their artists. Cameron then ridiculed the record sales of G-Unit members Lloyd Banks and Mob Deep by pointing out that Dipset member Jim Jones outsold both of their albums despite not being signed to a major label and also went on to clarify that his group, The Diplomats, had a distribution deal from several labels, 40, both rappers released diss songs with videos on YouTube. 50 Cent released Funeral Music, and suggested in the song that Cameron is no longer able to lead The Diplomats, and that Jim Jones should take his place. Cameron responded with Curtis and Curtis PT2, in which he makes fun of 50 Cent's appearance, calling him a gorilla, with rabbit teeth. 50 Cent responded by releasing Hold On with Young Buck. Since 2009, the feud slowly died down, and they eventually reconciled in 2016. Jim Jones Cameron revealed in 2007 that he was no longer speaking to his fellow diplomat members Joel Santana and Jim Jones, leading to speculation that the group had officially broken up. However, despite admitting that he did not want to contact Jim Jones, he said that he had no hard feelings towards him. In an interview with Miss Info, Cameron said, I still haven't spoken to Jim. But Jim ran with me for over 10 years, he worked hard, and I wish him the best of luck. Everybody thinks I'm mad at Jim. Why am I mad? I told people for years that Jimmy was gonna be a star. So it's better on my resume. I wish him the best. After three years of not speaking, Cameron and Jim Jones mended their differences in April 2010. In late 2011, both appeared together on Wolfgang Gartner's album Weekend in America, on the track Circus Freaks. Stop Snitchin' on April 22, 2007, Cameron was interviewed on 60 Minutes as part of a piece on the Stop Snitchin' movement. He also stated that he would not help the police try to locate the shooter saying he is not a snitch and helping the police would probably hurt his record sales. 
He stated in the interview, because with the type of business I'm in, it would definitely hurt my business. And the way that I was raised, I just don't do that. I was raised differently, not to tell. It's about business but it's still also a code of ethics when asked by Anderson Cooper if he would tell the police if a serial killer was living next to him, Cameron replied I would probably move but would not inform the police. Cameron later issued an apology for his comments, calling them an error in judgment, frowny face, where I come from, once word gets out that you've cooperated with the police that only makes you a bigger target of criminal violence. That is a dark reality in so many neighborhoods like mine across America. I'm not saying it's right, but it's reality. And it's not unfounded. There's a harsh reality around violence and criminal justice in our inner cities. Cameron has had contact with the police in the past. According to the Smoking Gun, New York Police Department records indicate that Giles filed a report with police after he was assaulted at a park in Harlem in 1999. Kanye West Both Cameron and Jim Jones took out their frustrations on former labelmate Kanye West in defense of former CEO Dame Dash, due to their longtime friendship dating back to growing up in Harlem, by releasing a song titled Toast rhyming over Kanye West's song Runaway. The feud eventually ended, evidenced by Cameron, Jim Jones, and Kanye West, collaborating on a song called Christmas in Harlem. Personal Life On October 23, 2005, Cameron was leaving a nightclub in Washington, D.C., having performed the day before at Howard University. While stopped at a traffic light at the intersection of New York and New Jersey Avenue shortly after midnight, a passenger of a nearby car threatened Cameron to give up his 2006 Lamborghini. Cameron resisted, and the man then shot him. Cameron was struck at least once as he was holding the steering wheel, but he was able to drive, going the wrong way on streets and flashing his lights until a fan drove him to Howard University Hospital. The gunman and passenger drove off, crashed into a parked car, and fled the scene. D.C. Metro Police recovered a cell phone from the scene of the crash, which they tried to use to trace the suspects. He stated that he does not know who shot him, although later, in the song Gotta Love It featuring Max B., Cameron claims that he saw the gunman throw up the Rockefeller Records diamond hand signal before shots were fired. Discography Studio Albums Confessions of Fire, 1998, SDE, 2000, Come Home With Me, 2002, Purple Haze, 2004, Kill a Season, 2006, Crime Pays, 2009, Purple Haze 2, 2019, Collaboration Albums Heat In Here Volume 1, with Vado, 2010, Guns and Butta, with Vado, 2011, You Wasn't There, with A Track, 2022, Filmography Paid in Full, 2002, State Property 2, 2005, Kill a Season, 2006, Rap Sheet, Hip Hop and the Cops, 2006, First of the Month, 2012, Percentage, 2013, Love and Hip Hop, New York, 2012, 2016, 2017, Honor Up, 2018, Queens, 2021.